with that said, the benefit of Islam for people, and what they promote this, as I said, some of it is benefit for politics, for the war, some of it is for religious reasons, some of it is very specific to the Israeli conflict, the Palestinian, Israeli, or Arab Israeli conflict, meaning, because some of it is not, is not religious, you know, some of the right wing pro Israel groups, for example, when they promote uh, you know, many, many of the loudest voices in America today promoting fear of Islam and Muslims, and the Emersons, the, the Dennis Prager, the Daniel Pipes, the, you name it, are, are the, the loudest, most vocal pro Israel extremists in America. The people who attack even other Jews who dare to criticize Israel, or dare to speak for the rights of the Palestinians. So it's not a coincidence that these same people who have spent their whole careers and their whole lives defending everything Israel does good or bad, even war crimes, anything, Israel is always right. Suddenly now they're shifting into demonizing Islam and Muslims. In Congress, in books, you know, they're all suddenly became experts on Islam or experts on terrorism. And again, so there's four political reasons. There's no debate. Some people are doing it for financial reasons. If you don't have a job, you're not making good money, suddenly call yourself either an ex-Muslim or an expert on Islam, and just bash them up and see how many people will call for you to speak at churches, synagogues, media, Fox News for sure. And it's very lucrative. I'm not giving you ideas. But you know the economy is not doing well very, very good these days. Just make sure you share the talk. I'm a very friend here. So it's unfortunate that's the reality. I'm going to go over eight components that define or would show it's not a fault. Meaning, if you see, you know, some people operate on one. I'm talking about average people, media people, politicians. First component, Islam is seen as a monolithic religion. Muslims are seen as one block. They don't change. They're not dynamic. As opposed to Christians who are diverse and Jews who are very diverse and dynamic and, and flexible and accepting of others. Muslims are seen as one block. It's like one block, and it's not true. But when, when you hear someone talk about that, know that they they need to be corrected. And it's important for us to challenge that misperception. We, we're diverse. We have liberals, conservative, devout, half devout, practicing, not practicing, with beard, no beard, with hijab, not hijab. And that's the reality of the problem. That's the reality of who the Muslims are. I'm not even talking about halal or haram, good or bad. I'm just talking about what is the Muslim that is what it is that we have. Salafis, Sufis, religious, devout, traditionalist, etc. etc. So that is what it is, and it's important to make sure that that is clear. Because that that is one of the first components that, that's on the mind of people. When they look at us, they see us as one mob. Oh, you're the Muslim, you're one of those who are like this. You're, we're like robots. We were thought of as you know robots. You know, we got an order. You know, one day we're gonna get a text message from Osama bin Laden and say operate. <laughs> That's how it is on the mind of the people. I know it's funny for us, but for them, you know, some people will sleep about that. Like, oh my god, why is that text message gonna come? Let's block your cell phone. So the other component is Islam is seen as the other. Islam is the other, meaning what people talk about, you know that on TV for example, the media. So you a Muslim would be invited to speak on some show Sanity or back to you. And then they say, well, your people, you guys, you know, it's like, what am I? I'm not, you know, I didn't land from Mars or Venus. Like, I'm an American. Well, it's your people who do these things. So it's always the other. And it's important for us Muslims specifically, and for all of us, but specifically for Muslims not to play into this. It is extremely important. Yes, we're Muslim, but they're Jew, they're Christian, they're atheist, they're, they're Buddhist, they're Hindus in this country, and they're all sorts of people. No one else is denied the fact that they're part of America because of their religion. But they get away with it when they're dealing with Muslims. And sometimes we play into it. We don't notice that. So it's important for us to remember that yes, we might have different religions, but we're all one community called Americans. And remind people that when you're asking for your right to pray at the, at the school or at the workplace, you're not asking for anything you need. Or if a sister says, I want to wear a hijab at the workplace, like a sister who wanted to wear the hijab at uh, Disneyland. I, you know, I remember some of the calls we were getting, you don't like it, go back home. That is all. And I'm not asking for anything even. She's asking for her right under the Constitution, freedom of religion. It is protected by Congress, by U.S. policy. For it's the requirement for any employer 
to reasonably accommodate religious practices for any person. This is not a Saudi law. Believe me, it's not a Saudi law. <laughs> Violence. 
And look what this, you know, they, they quote one verse out of context where it says, oh, Muslims are, uh, are asked to go outside. And, you know, read the verse. Read the verse before it and the verse after it. It talks, if you are attacked and you're wrongly attacked and forced out of your home, then you have the permission to defend yourself. And then it says, when your enemies stop fighting, then you should stop fighting. And God does not love transgression and do not transgress and so on. So the verse is so clear, it's only in self-defense, protecting yourself. But some you know, people will cut this verse off of good. And suddenly talk to you as if all religious texts don't have anything to do with violence. And you know, uh, yeah. 25 minutes? Oh my god, that's a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> I can go on, but we'll try to cut it off. But you know, if you look at the religious texts of other people, it includes a lot of violence too. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Bible, Old and New Testament. There's a lot of violence. And I hate to say it, but some of it you cannot take it in or out of context. Because you know, some of it says, go to this village and kill everybody there, animals, babies. You know, there's no context you can fix that. Don't compare. If we're going to talk, we're going to look at religious scriptures. Believe me, you don't want to make that comparison. For every verse that includes anything to do with violence in the Quran, there's at least 50 such verses in the Bible. And the ones in the Quran are extremely restricted. I, I don't say that to bash other religions. I studied at a Christian school, so I know what I'm talking about. The verses in the Quran are so restricted, it makes making war almost impossible. And the other side is kind of open-ended. And I don't think, you know, we don't, as Muslims, we don't believe that this is the world from Allah from God Almighty. But the point is, this is something, again, 